so hi everyone this is sagar shah and uh, let me know if you can hear me uh, i think it is uh, i'm late today by 4 minutes it seems but i would say that i would blame you guys for it <laughs> why do i say so well because the number of people who sent me games yesterday was just amazing you know i woke up today at 6 o'clock and i was going through the games and it's been 9 now and i'm just looking at it looking at it and tremendous i think nearly 30 or 35 people uh sent us sent me so but okay apologies for coming late but i think it will be a very interesting class because i have some good material for you guys today okay so <clears throat> let's uh, begin first as we always do with some tactics and then we move on to what we want to do but first of all let me just give a shout out to everyone out there uh the last message i can read is by subranil ghosh <coughs> who says i'm late by 5 minutes yes subranil i i know that uh and there are there are several people okay just sumed ram take shabd pratap chess tv arts and gadgets itohan idosa abdul karim vishal kumar amazing yeah like there were and yesterday i got to know that there are people from so many different states so many different countries here uh, it's a great fun to be with all of you uh, and uh, so let's start today's class and let's start with some tactics to solve and we are at in the chess base account tactics trainer and uh, first position is here so this is white to move not tough chess the game of brain says i have a question how to prepare for the tournament well we will discuss all of this but let's go step by step today we are going to you know begin with certain things and we will move on and i think tournament preparation will come at some point in these 21 days okay virinchi says queen at 7 shank also says queen at 7 well why why do you want to be like uh, trying to do something extraordinary it's a simple win yeah to all the people out there who gave the answer knight f6 check and i like all of those who wrote the moves so knight f6 GF6 Queen at seven, good job guys. You are improving. I see Reshu Jain who said that Vraj Patharia, uh, who is it? Cute babies, but all those who are just writing one move. Well, here it's obvious, but sort of make this habit to put the entire variation down. You know, if you can do that regularly, whatever you do for 21 days becomes a habit. so please do this yeah knight f6 check takes and mate okay let's go to the next one this one is black to move nice interesting position not simple i guess but i can see certain themes here uh quite clearly you know there are these mating patterns in the position let's see if you guys can crack this one this is black to move Namrata Rao says thank you so much for featuring my sister Tanuja Rao's art yeah for all those who are watching this you can go to our instagram 
some very nice uh, paintings done by Tanuja so have a look at it okay Mohak Agarwala says Queen H4 here okay Mohak this is interesting Queen into H4 Knight E2 nice Anjaniya Kakar says Knight E2 Shobit Jaiswal says Knight E2 Jimmy Joseph by the way Jimmy Joseph is none other than Jubin the youngster from Kerala very talented youngster I think he's rated somewhere around 2300 plus he says Queen H4 in this position Divya says Queen H4 Queen H4 Knight E2 and Rook H4 mid Divya good job you are writing the full variation uh, Dimitri Slizunko from Russia says Queen H4 Queen H4 Knight E2 King H2 Rook H4 yeah <clears throat> So everyone agrees that queen h4 is the best move here. Is there no defense for white after queen h4 that you can see? Or can you see? Because look at it very carefully. Black is actually a piece down. Did everyone count that? You know, it's quite easy to actually just start analyzing and completely forget about the fact that black is a piece down. So it could quite be possible that after queen h4 white can sacrifice a piece or something like that and save himself okay but so queen h4 and i'm trying to look at a defense if i take on h4 knight e2 check king comes up to h2 rook h4 this is a beautiful mate with a knight and a rook the other option is, i was thinking is queen e6 and I want to deflect this queen because if it takes I have knight e2 mate okay also queen g5 is an option but uh, the problem in all of that is that white just takes the knight so therefore queen h4 is the correct move takes check and if the king comes here look at this beautiful mate now this pattern should be put into your head like really really sh in a big way okay it should be by the way, Molai Patra has contributed 40 rupees. Molai, thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, so, the point is, look at this position. Okay, King H2, Knight covering this square and this square, and the Rook checking. If you can fix this pattern in your mind, you can find tactics much faster when you look at positions like this. And this is true for every talented player. They have these tactics, uh, sort of patterns, really well put in their brain. Okay, so my uh, suggestion to all of you is, when you are doing such tactics, you can say to yourself, "Yes, this tact, this pattern, I want to keep in my head." Okay, and try to do it that way. Let's do one more for today because we have to cover a lot. Uh, looks like another toughy, tough position. So this is white to move. Again, count the material first. I think white is a piece down. Yeah, Bhargav Vemar Vemparla says, what about F3 in the last position? Well, still NE2 was a mate. I forgot to mention it, but if F3, Knight E2 was a mate. Okay, this one is a complex one because no, several things are happening. But try to figure out how exactly should white try to win this. Not easy, not easy. There are so many possibilities here. Probal Ghost says, can we play knight e2 in the last position? Well, knight e2, queen e2, queen h4, f3, and perhaps it's not a checkmate there. b4 is the natural move, but again, try to give me lines, you know, rather than just uh, saying one move. Okay, I'm going to take lines. b4, knight b4, queen b6 says Mohini Bhave. Mohini, the queen is hanging, you know, black queen will just take it. Uh, chess with Arun says queen b4, but queen is hanging. Guys, wake up. 
कम ऑन लुक एट द बोर्ड रुक ए फोर बी ए फोर बी फोर से स्टेहन बट देन ए बी थ्री इज इट पॉसिबल टू टू जस्ट टेक ऑफ अ सॉ रवि कुमार वी सेज बी फोर नाइट बी फोर क्वीन सी सेवन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग आई थिंक रवि कुमार इज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग प्लेयर किंग ए सिक्स नाइट बी फोर डिड एनी वन एल्स गेट दिस आंसर प्रखर बजाज सेज बी फोर नाइट बी फोर रुक ए फोर बी ए फोर क्वीन सी फाइव येस बट प्रखर देन किंग ए सिक्स एंड यू स्टिल हैव टू गो ऑन लाइक बी फोर नाइट ए फोर रुक ए फोर and first of all king a4 is also possible yeah it's not completely ah then you take uh, queen b4 so b a4 queen b4 king a6 that and it's not a mate but ravi kumar has cracked it he says b4 you must take knight b4 then queen c7 check okay now the only move is king a6 because if you play queen b6 i just take it so king a6 and now knight takes b4 mate beautiful b4 takes check and mate well done well done excellent job guys um i think many others would also have got this perhaps virinchi sort of said the same moves but his uh, notation is off the mark king h6 virinchi you need to say king a6 not king h6 again to all the people out there who are um weak in uh, notation please work on it you know yesterday i was watching someone teaching chess uh, on on facebook live or you know nowadays i see lot of videos and the coach himself was so bad at notations that he was saying this pawn should move here this knight should move here and i feel that notation problem is not something that only beginners have even people playing chess for years and years have this problem okay so don't take it lightly by the way rook a4 is a natural move that comes to mind but then after let's say b a you need to see what next to do queen c5 king a6 and yes you win the queen and this should be winning in fact i could see another way to win the queen as well like check knight b4 queen b4 king a6 and knight c7 again wins the queen but i feel that if you are playing chess the most important thing is to finish off your opponent in the most accurate manner if there is a mate in two why to win the queen yeah okay so let's uh begin with today's plan just to uh recap what we have learned until now is the list of imbalances okay i guess how many here you know in this live chat that we have and the live show right now are here for the fifth day consecutively like you have attended all five days you have missed nothing so you are really enjoying this so please let me know how many uh are there anup p asks what's an effective way to learn notation well anup as i mentioned just take a chess board okay and try to ask let someone ask you what is this square what is this square and you try to guess what it is don't look at the notations on the side yeah so okay i see uh vashist halder yasmin siddhant stehen preet matre chandan ck jaydeep chakrabarti uh nuple robert castellino setu minocha okay there are several people here so for them it's like a continuation yeah like whatever we are doing every day you continue it's not like a new episode every day where you don't need to know the previous thing so all those who haven't attended any of the sessions like if you missed day 2 go back the recording is there on our youtube channel have a look at it yeah good i'm sure there were a lot of people here who and i see the list is a long one so i'm very happy 
uh, that all of you are here. <clears throat> so we learnt about imbalances and my main aim with this entire 21 day session is if someone comes to you and says hey look at this position what's happening you should be like okay let me just think and you can find moves you can find ideas so basically what we are trying to do is improve your thinking process be it middle game end game opening whatever it is if you have a good thinking process you can play well in any position so that's my aim and for that I'm following the imbalance method or you can say Silman's method of list of imbalances where you list down the differences in the position and then try to figure out what's happening so first one is superior minor piece we are working on it today is the last day for it we'll move to pawn structure tomorrow space material control of an open file or a weak square lead in development initiative king safety okay these are the main things also yesterday i gave you some notes here which were if you have a bad bishop you do three things with it you exchange it you chain the structure or you bring it outside the pawn chain if your opponent has double bishops, try to exchange one of them. If you have the bishop pair, preserve them and part the with them at the right moment. Knights prefer closed positions. Yes, all awake. <laughs> bishops love open positions. Knights like pawns only on one side. Bishop like positions on, uh, pawn with pawns on both sides. And knights are good, good blockaders. Okay, let me just make a small change. I think I made a bishops like positions with pawns on both sides. Yeah, now I've corrected it. Okay, so let's go to the chessboard now, shall we? And uh, today is the day of knights. Yeah, okay, nice wordplay. Today is the day of knights. And I'm going to start off with a game that made a huge impression on me. So, you know, what is what is something that makes a huge impression on you is when you can actually remember the exact place in which you learnt it, who was teaching it, and the way you were. So this game was shown to me maybe, maybe 16 or 16. 17 years ago or perhaps yeah 16 years ago I was 14 years old and I remember the classroom in which I was shown this game it was shown by a trainer called Shrikhande sir who, who lives now in Dombivli in Mumbai and he was showing me this <coughs> and it made such a deep impression on me that I still remember it okay We have some questions. Abdul Karim says imbalances can be for both sides. How can we judge that position? Yes, you have to look at imbalances for both sides. Assess it. You know, I, I gave the example in one class that if you are, have, are going to decide a car which you want to buy uh, when you are traveling through a city of Mumbai or something like this, which car will you choose? Then you have an I-10 on one hand and a Mercedes. So you measure both like white and black side you measure the pluses and minuses and then come to a decision about it Cameroon Davis says why are bishops not good blockaders but knights are good blockaders well I think I explained this in yesterday's class if the knight blockades something it can still attack the pieces mostly bishops are blocked by their own pawns so Sometimes they are not the best blockaders, but yeah, it's quite possible bishop can be a good blockader if its diagonal is open, okay? Now, so, if, if this game is memorable for you, you may also remember after 15 years when you teach someone else that, okay, I learnt it on the online session. Okay, so White is my one of my favorite players, Vasily Smyslov. Uh, for all the people who haven't studied his games and want to improve positional play, please study his game. Okay, it's a Sicilian game. And by the way, remember one thing that don't get stuck to studying games from your opening only. 
some may say i don't play sicilian what's the need to study this oh i don't play french i shouldn't look at so don't do that chess as a whole is rich it's beautiful and you must learn everything about it yeah you don't need to say oh this game i don't want to learn or this game i don't want to study because i don't play this opening okay so bishop e2 bishop e7 castles castles bishop e3 now you will see that both sides are nicely developing their pieces uh, black plays the next move knight c6 black is doing well has less space but a uh, one extra pawn in the center why does only one pawn in the center uh f4 queen c7 queen e1 knight d4 bishop d4 and e5 okay bishop went back to e3 and here i would like you to think for a bit and tell me what should black do here you know this is a very typical position in sicilian and uh, if someone can tell me how uh, black should continue it would be nice Okay guys you have lot of questions i can understand but let's focus on the class yeah like what is the best time control to improve chess how can i improve my calculation how can i become a grandmaster how can i become xyz well you can't become anything if you keep on if you don't focus on what's happening focus is the first important thing so let's focus A6 is suggested by Stehen knight g4 by Rishi Venkatraman uh Mohak Agarwal says knight d7 knight e5 ef4 okay very interesting mohak i think uh there's something to be said about what you suggest Jaydeep says bishop e6 to prepare d5 interesting Jaydeep this is what Rudakowski played in this position. Uh maybe b6 bb7 very interesting uh, suggestion by Cameron D Davis b6 maybe start with a6 so that you can be even more ambitious with b5 and then bishop b7 yeah. Um but I think the thing which I like the most here is ef4 and you might ask like hey but isn't this pawn a weakness but so is this pawn yeah it becomes isolated and here it's a the juicy square there is a juicy square in the position for the black knight over here can anyone tell me which is that juicy square that you can go to by the way all those who said uh, like knight g4 here i'm a little bit scared about takes takes and f5 and suddenly the bishop is kind of trapped here so you know that's the reason why i first want to take take uh in the game i mean rook f4 is also possible but bishop f4 what what is the juicy square in this position for the knight yes very good very good sumana banerji haldar yasmin shrivardhan ram Ra rajesh verma mitesh por khetrarya shank spreet matre everyone says e5 good job guys this is a good square if the knight can be here it will be it cannot be removed by a pawn but if you play knight d7 what is the problem black white simply jumps in so strategy should always be followed up or supported by concrete moves yeah you cannot just say yes 97 95 is great let me do it and then suddenly opponent plays knight d5 and you are shot so in order to stop knight d5 or at least make it less powerful how do you begin how do you begin here first instead of playing knight to d7 you 
first go <coughs> bishop e6 okay and the point is that let's say after a move like queen uh, g3 i can go knight d7 and then after you uh, yeah i should be careful with bishop h6 ideas here yeah, yeah. Yeah, if rook f4, this works really well, but bishop f4, yeah, I was thinking of bishop e6, but then queen g3, maybe I have to be a little careful, because if I go uh, knight d7, I'm worried about this move, actually. It's, uh, it's not completely wrong to, you know, sacrifice an exchange here, because you get control over the dark squares, but it doesn't look good, I mean it's not enough so because I, I cannot defend bishop f6 you just take it yeah possible maybe I have to do something else here but then I'm not in time for example if I play g6 then rook a d1 and suddenly you know there is pressure here I want to go knight d7 but I can't because d6 is hanging and most of the times I want to put my knight on e5 when this happens. Yeah, it's not a hurry to play knight d7 but if I don't do it now, for example if I do this, now let's say rook d8, maybe knight b5 also wins a pawn but okay knight e4 is hanging uh, later but at least in this position I may never be able to play knight d7 because bishop d6 is kind of losing a pawn so okay anyway we are digressing from the subject bishop e6 was played in the game <coughs> sorry and f5 was played and here you know black's best move was bd7 with the idea of bishop c6 keeping that bishop but he went bishop c4 takes takes and now i want you to use what you have learnt until now uh, white to blue white to play here what will you do okay I have we have a contribution by Sachin Paul who's donated five dollars thank you Sachin who says the b6 Nimzo is my favorite opening and your videos ruined it with bd3 any to move order plans to recapture on c3 with the knight huge fan of your work well Sachin, it's not dead, yeah. You can find some ideas for black as well over there. Uh, but thank you so much for contributing uh, here. Sayyid, knight h5 is not possible because bishop into h5 in that position, yeah. <clears throat> okay, everyone here is become an expert at bishop versus knight hema logu ravi kumar uh, rahul yadav optis optic red panda pradeep das mangal saravana haldar yasmin pradeep das sayan roy everyone says go bishop g5 excellent bishop g5 and the point is this knight is actually defending this beautiful square on d5 and white says I'll just take it and then I will have a wonderful knight on d5 against this poor bishop and black can't do anything about it okay so he went rook f e8 here by the way you can be a little smart and play knight d5 it's trying to look at it but then after take, take and f6, this is a very strong attack for white. So, he played rook f8 clearly with the idea of moving the knight. And after take, take, I want you to find uh, white's next move here. Think for a bit and tell me what white should do here. Cyan Roy says this game is in reassess your chess. Could be this one. I as I said, I remember from my own memory, kind of what I learned. And I think everyone here 
should have this game as a part of their growing up culture shankar pv says queen g3 here okay possible siddhant vasish says why not queen g3 instead of uh, bg5 well if you play queen g3 yeah you have a threat of bishop h6 not sure if it's a threat because knight e8 yeah f6 may come up so i could very well play a move like uh what can i do maybe rook f8 is a possible move because then if you go bishop h6 i can go bishop f8 uh, but bg5 is just more clean you know you are going to take here and now you want to play as white so who has given some move uh g4 is suggested i would say g4 is a kind of a move which doesn't understand the the imbalances in the position you don't want to attack the black king here you want to put your knight here first you want to slowly then begin yeah like if you go g4 black is happy he goes bishop g5 and then puts his bishop on f4 which is a good square for his bishop yeah knight d5 all the people who say knight d5 did you consider that your pawn is hanging on c2 for example i jump in very nice it's not my pawn how do i care what do you do now i'll just take a pawn on c2 a lot of people also said they want to go rook f2 first to defend this pawn and then go knight d5 but you know sometimes if you can make the most direct move work then you should go for it jimmy joseph said rook f3 well rook f3 is an aggressive move not bad but you know knight d5 is a nice move the point is what happens after queen c2 that is the move queen c2 rook f2 says rb 9280 rocky okay sian roy says queen d2 was the best in the previous move okay but 95 let's look at it by the way here if you see there is a fork looming on c7 but the queen defends it you the natural move is to play this but then after queen into b2 knight c7 say queen into a2 i mean black has won three pawns that's a lot for an exchange a knight and three pawns for a rook so instead the right move here is rook f2 good move with you attacking the queen and now threatening this so the queen cannot leave the c file and so the queen goes anywhere back on the c file let's say here i go rook c1 attack the queen and then anyway go knight c7 next move so for example queen oops not queen a5 that would be like you plunder a queen but queen d4 then knight c7 and i win at least an exchange and i have all the material intact in the position so white is better okay but in the game uh, he played bd8 and now came for c3 this is how smith low plays yeah cool and calm no hurry we'll go g4 slowly no need to rush into the attack b5 and now b3 push the queen back king h1 and now we play the move which was suggested by many of you rook f3 excellent move uh and then after king h8 you know black can go f6 but this is already very passive this type of play uh, white is just going to go g5 soon and finish him off so king h8 f6 gf queen h4 rook g8 i'm i'm not going very deep into this uh, final part of the game it was very well played i like this move rook g3 because if you take it it means that i can checkmate you if you don't do anything let's say um if you play a move like queen f2 how does white win this position 
okay how does white win this position yeah harsh jani and also one more person said why not queen d2 covering g5 for the bishop defect i understand maybe queen d2 was good but you know smithlo wanted to keep his queen on e1 perhaps to take it to h4 later on g3 h4 okay how should white finish off the game i will see a sea of answers here mikhail botvinnik sayan roy rajesh sharma uday paideti very good hema logo you all are very quick no not rook g7 yeah uh, because okay it's also it's also playable but queen h7 is just faster takes and mate so good bishop f6 and now this rook here and uh, finally you can see how everything is jammed up here and so white says i'll go, i'll bring my rook oops to the d file and uh, win the game d5 rook g7 rook d5 and rook d8 this was a great win for smithlo but i think you can understand that how in this position after f5 it was a complete mistake to play bishop c4 because after take take bg5 this is just a losing strategically losing position for black uh, better would have been to go bd7 and then if you go bishop g5 i can go bishop c6 also queen b6 should be looked at yeah but bishop c6 and i defend the d5 square and black is not so worse here okay so this was one game of a great player so i want you guys to remember games of great players yeah this is very important for me uh, these are known as classics if you remember them it's like your foundation is strong you can then build it up with games of carlson with games of mvl uh, nepo giri but first look at the games of the past masters it really helps okay <clears throat> uh m justin says can we get full info of the smithlow's games it's smithlow versus rudakowski uh, i can tell you the year by the way in chess base there is a, a very good feature where if you press enter like this it can tell you which game it was from the live database so here as you can see this was smithlow rudakowski from 1945 okay just press enter and if you are connected to the internet it will take you there okay so this was pretty good well uh amazing sachin paul says he contributed another $5 thank you sachin very kind of you uh, you already contributed 5 before and he says your contributions to popularizing chess in india is amazing and the fight against covid please consider chess 24 style banter blitz with indian gms on chess base that's a good idea i will think about it and uh, yeah could be useful to get some strong players playing online uh, games <clears throat> okay now what we are going to do is look at the games of a not so great player <laughs> he is uh, this is me i'm going to show you one game of my own and the reason i show you my games is not because you know i want to brag or do something really uh, this but because i understand my games the best and i have played it so i want to show you and uh, so this one is between pratik patel and sagar shah this is i was this is in 2007 and i like this game very much because i made use of the imbalances perhaps uh, this was i think roughly when i had read this book so this was this period when i was already beginning to take these imbalances very seriously and i used to play the accelerated dragon 
which was my favorite opening until a point against the Sicilian, not the dragon, but the accelerated dragon. And I would take here bishop e2, knight d4, queen d4, bishop g7, queen d1. By the way, the main move here is bishop e3, castles, and then queen d2. This is how white plays. Uh, and you know what I liked about accelerated dragon is they were very simple moves. You you take on d4, then you play bishop g7, you castle, then you put your bishop here, then you put your knight on d7, you put it on c5, your bishop is working well. But you know, oops, not like this, like this. And, but you know, after a point, it starts getting dull. You know? That same moves again and again, again and again. And I'm sure that all the people out here who play the London system or... Uh, let's say something similar get bored king's indian attack by these same same things uh, yeah you get good results but chess is after all not just about results and in the long term it does hamper your chess when you keep playing the same thing over and over again i i would like you that if you master an opening keep it with you and move to another one also so you know then you have two things with you try doing that I'm black here. Pratik Patil is white. Uh, bishop e6 I played. Castles. Queen a5. Queen d2. Rook fc8. Attacking c4 pawn. He played knight d5. Uh, my queen is attacked by the way on a5. So I took. By the way an intermediate move like knight e7 doesn't work because then I attack. And that's the reason why also I took this rook to c8 and not this one. Because if I play rook a c8, knight d5 suddenly starts becoming quite uh, tricky. Queen d2, knight e7 check and then bd2. And this is attacked and maybe it's possible to play but rook f c8 is just more much better. Takes, takes. And here I played bishop d5 ed5 okay guys all of you great minds here who are thinking who have forgone their sleep who have forgone a beautiful sunday with their family friends in order to learn chess from me what are the imbalances in this position okay and i'm going to do this a lot with you so get ready try to, to type a bit what are the imbalances in this position think about it okay Sachin Paul says small request flip the board so that we can see your perspective if possible mm. possible the, the reason why I'm not flipping is because I want you to think from your opponents end also you know uh, and it, it's it's a matter of practice at first you feel uncomfortable oh it's black but believe me when I'm looking at the board for me it's the same now and I think if you keep doing it regularly, it will also become the same for you. <laughs> Someone said, Abdul Karim said, my family is chess. Okay, let's start. Shank says, why does Bishop pair? Okay, good. Also, I think Rajesh Verma said the same. Kuntkaran Parik said the same. Sachin Paul said the same. Mohini Bhave said the same. Black has a Bishop and a Knight. So... I guess white should get it in his favor. What else? What are the other imbalances? You you know the minor pieces. Yes, Sudipta Mondal has said it right. Space. But what space? Who has more space? Can you tell me? Black has an open file. Shivam Chaudhary. Good job. Black has a semi-open file. Whenever opponent has a pawn on that file, it's not a completely open file. I remove this pawn. This becomes an open file. But when an opponent has a pawn, I don't want to give up my rook, then it is a semi-open file. Chandresh Sina says, Bishop pair and space advantage for white. Well done, Chandresh. You have two things going for white. E7, D6 are potentially weak. I would definitely say E7. This is a weakness. Good job by Shanks who has looked at E7. D6 is well fortified for now. Harsh Jani says, open file for Rook and 94 is a threat. Thanks Harsh for 
thinking a bit from my end as well uh what else everyone has seen the bishop pair everyone sees that black has the control of c file e7 could be a weakness uh what else is happening let's just have a look at the quick look at the imbalances here we looked at minor piece pawn structure wise i would say somehow black pawn structure is more compact you know with these pawns white pawn structure is more susceptible because c4 could become weak i can strike with b5 if required uh space white has the space material is even control of an open file i would say definitely white uh, black has the control of the c file white would like to use the e file lead in development maybe not particularly important because both sides are well development well developed and now we come to an important imbalance initiative okay king safety also both kings are safe so if you did this imbalance thing till point number 6 you will feel like white is slightly better because white has the bishop pair white also has space but hey initiative what is initiative initiative means the side which has the move okay and the side which has the move can create threats and say i attack you i attack you and you know the opponent side has to defend so it's a small term it's a it's a dynamic advantage it can go away for example if i make a move like king h8 black play white play something like say rook c1 or uh, a move like say even bishop d3 it might just you might lose your initiative so what is the move here that black has which gives him the initiative okay i <clears throat> yes arun kumar rightly pointed out also arts and gadget stuff that black has the initiative even sanchit uh, said that black can get the initiative here so how many of you have the move knight e4 in mind ah ankan has a different move ankan 064 i'll come to it but everyone else i think are saying knight e4 uh with an attack on the bishop but guys think about it after 94 i think white has to play his bishop back to c1 okay it's a bad move it's somehow not something that you want to make it's not like vis visually very good but next move i could kick your knight away not not f3 bd4 check will come but i can play um, bishop d3 attack your knight and then slowly unravel with rook b1 and yes this is 94 i wouldn't say is a bad move but i have a stronger move here which was suggested by ankan 064 i think and anish adiga also has suggested it and the move is also sudanshu singh good job guys the move is b5 and you will see that my idea is if you take here i will jump in with the rook your bishops are attacked and then uh, you can't go bishop c3 e2 is hanging after you play rook d1 i have many possibilities one is knight d5 one is knight e4 other is rook b2 uh i think knight e4 is the strongest move i i guess i'm winning a piece here maybe bishop d3 well worst case i can play uh rook d2 bishop e4 rook b2 this is possible and instead of knight e4 i can even play rook b2 and i think white has a uh, black has got excellent counter play here with this hanging rook coming in here down here so b5 this is known as initiative taking the game by your uh, by your hands you know not giving opponent time so my opponent said well i am going to play b3 and his point was if you go knight e4 i will play rook d1 and i'll try to hang on so i played a5 remember that knights like 
open positions sorry this time i'm not going to joke knights like closed positions uh, rook c1 knight e4 rook c2 and i played b4 because my knight loves a close the closed position now <clears throat> you know i sat there on the board he played bishop f3 and i put my knight here i was feeling so good for my knight it's such a beautiful piece i was looking at it and telling myself this piece can never be moved it's like the apple of my eye he, i can play a4 i can start queen side play and then my opponent suddenly played the move bishop e3 and he told me look i'm okay with the draw i'm going to take this knight away and then rook c5 opposite color bishops i am happy with that position so i said nothing doing i'm going to keep my knight now i have a question for all of you here okay if black was given an option okay to say remove one pair of minor pieces from the board one pair means one black minor piece and one white minor piece which one will you remove from this position for both sides so that black gets a good position okay this is a very interesting question because you know what i'm trying to show you here is to teach you the art of um, schematic thinking okay what is schematic thinking schematic means you make schemes schemes means i'm going to not calculate moves i'm not going to look at okay knight d7 bishop g4 f5 this is known as concrete calculation schematic thinking means if i can remove a pair of rooks maybe i'm better you don't know how to do it but you just think in this way okay it's like uh, some kind of a shake chili like thinking you know we have this famous uh, character in uh, indian folklore who thinks and thinks and who says if i got this if i got a hen i would get eggs if i got eggs i will sell them then i'll get a sheep and then i will get this and then i'll get a beautiful girl i'll earn money i'll have a house <laughs> and and that this but i'm not asking you to go so deep but i'm asking you if given a choice what would you remove okay and everyone here are like really strong positional players it seems everyone said remove those dark squared bishops from the board remove them okay these two guys and now i'm going to show you a feature in chess base here so that i can share my screen this is my chess base and i am doing the analysis here i press the button s okay uh, and what s does is uh sorry i don't want to save this for now it brings up a board in which i can set up a position so i'm going to set up with removing these two bishops here okay and i do okay and i come to this position and this is what i want to show you uh here exactly this knight will next say for example white plays a random move say bishop e2 now knight c5 and look at this piece no one can remove it it's a monster a4 becomes even more strong and you know this is after take take rook will jump in the other rook will come in and black will be dominating okay so i hope you understood how schematic thinking works so i had all these plans uh for myself where so coming back to the game here bishop e3 knight d7 bishop d1 i had all these plans for myself but i didn't know how to get that position so you know chess sometimes if you know what you want to get you can lure your opponent okay so what i did i started playing interesting moves i first went bishop e5 my opponent sort of didn't get the idea why is he doing this so he went rook e2 i played f5 so 
so he went bishop g5 now you can see my opponent is playing well what he did was he saw that this was a weakness here so he brought his rook and he brought his bishop and he wants to attack here very interesting play and so i said to myself okay let me defend this guy here now i had two tricks up my sleeve okay first one i saw a tactic which was if he takes i take and he plays f4 yes he wins back the piece but i think i am very happy because after king f6 takes i have got my knight versus bishop scenario okay so he didn't do this he was thinking and i was hoping for him to play the move f4 and by the way uh, my opponent is a very good player he's pratik patel he's a strong player from uh, jalgaon and f4 just shows a lack of understanding of imbalances in the position i gave a first a check i was very happy because i had finally been able to lure my opponent in a way where i am going to exchange these two bishops and you see schematic thinking helps i have got the knight versus bishop scenario which i wouldn't have been able to if i hadn't thought what i wanted okay so rook e1 i went rook c7 uh yeah bishop h6 by the way would mean that in a way you are just trapping your bishop there keep you keep the bishop but it's like bishop has put on the side of the board it's not a good move at all uh, so exchanging was relatively best and yes i have a weakness but i'm going to defend it and then get my knight so bc2 i went rook e8 so that the knight can come to d7 and then i put the knight here i could have uh, here by the way taken on a3 uh, but then rook a1 and he would have taken back this pawn and this could become weak so i said never mind i still have one more break in the position which is e6 at the right moment so uh, king g2 thank you sagar for the sessions please paste the notes that you take or took in the chat section also are there any book which specifically calls out imbalances just want to look at someone else's perspective jaydeep chakrabarti says um, and he's contributed 400 rupees as he always does in all sessions thank you jaydeep very kind of you uh, sachin paul said why to Uh, capture with the knight here you could have just taken with the king but i think that uh, check king f7 this uh, somehow even this could have been possible yeah i i feel but in a way what i was thinking is i have a lot of time in the position he can't do any real thing so i can just get it here but you are right it's not completely illogical e6 rook c7 and then finally uh, i was able to exchange the rooks and this is a winning end game because this majority here is completely blocked by the knight while white black has a clear majority on the queen side and i just go h6 and g5 and now my next aim is to get my king like this and keep my knight on this side to save everything and get him to uh, to g7 to defend this pawn and attack this is what i did actually in the game i got it to g7 first made the bishop passive and then uh, got my king to the other side and when he couldn't see a way to stop it he sacrificed his bishop but this was just winning okay so i think you got a good feel of when a knight can be better than a bishop two things yes tiny bboss says aren't there pawns on both sides of the board shouldn't a bishop be better yes but the position is closed remember there are no absolute rules in chess you need to observe 
also the bishop has no clear weaknesses to attack in the position and the closed nature of the position means that black is better uh, if it was open remove all these pawns here who knows also all these pawns on being on the same color as the bishop makes it quite difficult for white to win okay let's look at one last game before i move to your games because i have prepared quite a bit for your games uh you know so i'm going to take this game so that your understanding of the knights is solidified in a way so this one was against hardik mehta okay by the way uh, to jaydeep's point which he mentioned that all the notes i think i will share with you this entire database mm, in my article i'll write it on chess base india soon you can pick up the things from there on chess base dot in uh, and um, if there are any other books which have similar concepts i i think there are several books on positional play but imbalances is a method not uh, spoken by many people i am sure there are so many others for example kotov had his own strategy of saying things then there was uh, chuchelo who is a currently a great coach he has a theory called uh, strategic balance and it's also very interesting but all of these people you know it finally comes to something similar what we are looking at it's not the names could be different but this is what we are looking at the differences in the position and then <coughs> trying to make use of those differences okay uh let's look at another game very quickly same opening this was hyper accelerated dragon by the way if you go knight c6 here d4 takes takes g6 this is accelerated dragon but if you go second move g6 this is hyper accelerated dragon if you go d6 takes takes knight f6 knight c3 g6 this is dragon okay just to so that you understand the differences uh take bishop e3 knight f6 this time there was no pawn on c4 like in the last game <coughs> king h1 a6 bishop f3 b5 and knight d5 and i played here knight d7 my opponent went c3 a5 and he played knight d4 now i want all of you to think about what would you do in this position gargi dc asked a question should i play drois chess opening against higher rated player no gargi you must fight you must try to improve you know there's if you are afraid of your opponent then you know improvement is slower you look at all these youngsters uh, when they become gms at the age of 12 and 13 it's only because they are fearless you know they don't fear anyone so don't don't do that <clears throat> okay there were some questions in the last game but we are not going to right now go back uh, maybe you can analyze on their own and if you have any questions write to me on chessbaseindia@gmail.com i will respond to it <clears throat> yes this is my game uh, this is a game between hardik mehta who is 2078 and myself uh, in 2009 i'm black yeah knight c5 is a possible move here not a bad move but i thought to myself what are the pieces i want on the board okay and i i thought that you know yes sachin paul is absolutely right he says you first take on d5 good move you take here then you take on d4 you take here and then you take here 
Of course, taking with the pawn means I get the open c file, the pawn structure is bad, so queen d4. And we have a big imbalance in the position, knight versus bishop. Which piece is better? It's not as clear as last time. The bishop still has scope. It can go here. But I believed that I can make my knight better. You know, a part of creating an imbalance is also that you will nurture your imbalance better than your opponent okay and so queen b6 he didn't exchange because end games would be preferable for black i went rook c7 played kept my knight this time on f6 because i was a little bit afraid that my king would be lonely rook e3 queen c5 f5 rook f e1 uh, here sorry queen c4 rook f e1 and I played b4. I, I was quite proud of this move. And my point was that he's not really threatening to take on e7. Because there is a mate on f1. So why can't I just continue my play? And so I continued my play on the queen side. He played fg, hg and he played h3 here. Which was not a good move. Uh, rook e8. Rook d3. Queen A2 and slowly and steadily you know I managed to win this position you can see how this bishop has to constantly defend this pawn this knight does two things it attacks this pawn keeps the king safe and is clearly a superior piece and although it's not playing the most important role in the position uh, I did win a pawn and then slowly I managed to convert this into a full point. Mm, rook b2, bishop c2 and here I could win a piece because e1 was hanging. Sorry, I'm, maybe I'm going to fast but queen c2, queen e1 and I was winning so rook f7 and here my opponent resigned after a couple of more moves. So this was state championship and I managed to finish second here behind Arjun Tiwari but um, yeah once again it's it's like these imbalances if you create them well and use them well you can do great job uh, my suggestion to you is to have knights in a position which are closed bishops in the position which are open and knight should have good outposts like c5, f6, you know, good squares where it can sit on. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is have a look at some of your games which were sent. By the way, I'm, I'm just going to uh, show you. Today was really a great day for me when I woke up because... <coughs> Oops, what happened? I don't know, something happened, it just crashed. Uh, yeah, which is my database? Yes, this one. Okay, so, first of all, I had given a homework yesterday, which was, as I mentioned, by Shatnik, who gives a lot of interesting positions on chess base india which was this one and many of you could first of all not understand which side the pawn pawns are moving <laughs> but black is going this way white is going this way so the first move is actually rook a8 not bishop a8 because after h3 b7 h2 b6 h1 queen would be a stalemate you see it's like a home quarantine everyone inside their home but bg7 asking this pawn come on move forward so you go here queen check takes king h7 check and mate okay so bishop a8 doesn't work and that's why the right move is rook a8 h3 bishop a7 h2 rook b8 h1 queen c8 and there you have it 
this is a very interesting position bishop c6 bishop f8 queen b7 white is now trying to survive and now whatever move black makes uh, he's in trouble so you know i'm threatening to make a queen but black goes queen f5 and this is a beautiful stalemate rook the rook cannot move this rook cannot move queen cannot move <laughs> bishop cannot move all the pawns are locked this is pinned king cannot move <clears throat> and that's how you should be guys locked down for 21 days don't go outside your home and that's why this position was given uh, i would like to thank shatnik for doing this and vladislav tarasyuk who who made this position <coughs> yeah it's not uh, it's not a it's a composed position it didn't happen in the game <coughs> itohan idahosa says your email is not working right now is there any other way to contact you hmm maybe you can write in the comment section of this uh, video and i'll get back to you okay now what we are going to do is i just wanted to show you uh, how many games i received so first of all suman chakrabarti sent me a game against saptarshi roy gm purvit purvit has sent setu minocha okay uh then i have some homework of fisher games for you there is rick gupta rahul yadav who sent a very nice game vishesh chess confused i think um, i don't know the name of who sent this but there is sikan zero i think someone by the name warrior over here abdul kalam who sent a very nice game santanu bohra Jaya Veera Anand Sivaraman uh I think Krishna Prasad is his name and uh Shri Sai Shrivardhan and Prathamesh Divekar so so many games all annotated many of them annotated by all of you fantastic job guys this is really cool i have so many interesting material to share from this but as always you know we are running out of time so maybe tomorrow what we do is we are going to spend uh, some time looking at your positions and uh, what i would do is also show you a very interesting opening which fisher liked uh, it's it's a well known opening i'm not going to reveal everything here um okay so this is basically i don't want to start something right now because then we will be close to the time to end um yeah i i actually looked at all the games here that was sent and tried to find interesting moments from there because i truly believe that what you play it can be very good material for example i can just give you an example of a, of something i learned a lot from this game which was by gm purvit okay so purvit is white and he played this opening and his opponent played c6 and now purvit said i think he was afraid of the move next move d5 in this position so he played the move knight f3 which was clearly not a good move the most natural move is castles here yeah but then he was afraid of d5 so you take and take and now my question to you is what should white play okay new patel says how to get latest games from mega database well new you need a serial number so you can buy it from chessbase india and once you have it you can update your games regularly also there is a video on how to get latest games from for mega database on our youtube channel so please have a look at it okay by the way is gm purvit here purvit uh anyone who can give me the answer here white to move uh, what should white play here and believe me 
I learned from this move a lot. Bishop B5 says Anish Adiga, Vishal Kumar, Bishop B5, Rishi Venkat Raman, Anjaneya Kakar, Vishal Kumar, everyone Bishop B5 check. That's why this position is amazing. It's amazing, really. I Yes, Mukilan Bala, I got your game. Yes, you played A3 on move 1. Pratamesh Divekar, good job, you gave me the right answer. But not many, not many people. Uh, so the right move, of course Bishop B5 looks the most natural. Then I think black will go BD7. And yes, white has a small edge here. But the move which gives a clear advantage is Knight D5, as said by Prathamesh. And the point is, after you take, what is the killer move for white here? Really beautiful move. What move should white play here which ends the game? Not ends the game, but gives him a big advantage. Yes, Anjaneya Kakar, I got your game. Yeah, I just showed it, yeah. Jayant Rao, I couldn't open your game. I, re I replied on your mail. You need to... Uh, yeah, Aditya Ramanathan said that in this position, it is good to play Bishop E2 and F3. Yes, Aditya, it's good. But, well, when you have something direct, why do you want to go the long route? What's a good move here? Knight d5, knight d5, and yes, everyone is now getting this move, which is queen h5. Excellent. Look at this move. Such a beautiful move. Point is, this knight cannot be defended. If you play bishop e6, I'm just picking up that knight. And if you don't do something, I'm just going to take this. If you move the knight, say here just game over this will be a mate in a few moves so you see he, from a normal game this is not a grandmaster game although Purvit says he's GM Purvit but it's not a grandmaster game uh, you can learn so much you can learn that d5 which looks like the most natural move gives white a great position after this okay so this is what I want to do Ah, queen f3 is not working here because of bishop e6. And this bishop, if the queen were on h5, it would be pinned. So I can take it. But now he can just recapture and this is okay for black. Sumed, I think I received your game. As, as I mentioned here, uh, if I have missed any of the games, then they are here, all the games. But <coughs> if I have missed any of them, I'll go back and get them for tomorrow's class. So all the people who came out today, all the people who contributed for this class, a big thank you to all of you. I think um, you have been uh, very kind to, to me uh, and to these sessions that are happening. Uh, I hope you are learning a lot. I'm enjoying uh, showing something that has added a lot of value to me as a chess player <coughs> and uh, yes it, ha it has brought a big value uh, to my chess career and I wanted to share it with all of you in this 21 days if you have any suggestions anything let me know in the comment section and uh, <coughs> or you can mail me at chessbaseindia at gmail.com and yes for today I would just say uh, no homework yeah today just work on your notations work on your tactics get yourself fit and tomorrow I'll have a lot of homework for you to do okay so get ready okay let me take a few couple of questions yes you can send games today for all those who would like to send more annotated games can do so today uh, yeah, queen f3, knight f6 was better, correct, uh, by Cyan Roy. What, why level of 2000 rated computers is different from 2000 rated player, Vishal Kumar? I don't know, I don't know how a 2000 level computer plays, 
but maybe the computer is tactically stronger if it is 2000 uh, than being positional okay ashish power says how to calculate 7 8 moves depends from position to position but it requires a lot of hard work and willpower to actually calculate well you know source of randomness says thank you very much for this session i have to go because it's 1 am and i'm learning from these that i can watch very nice 1 am where are you nine hours maybe us somewhere mayur gondalekar says thanks a lot will recommend kojima san to join as well sure that would be wonderful we have a lot of people coming from um, from japan uh, who who can watch this that would be nice by the way everyone wants homework yeah so and someone is sad that there is no homework Ooh, what should i give for today mm, well here's a small homework for you analyze the game fisher versus miyag masuren okay this is the game that i am talking about here if you look at this fisher versus miyag masuren this one it is from m y a g m a r s u r e n 1967 just analyze it and look at the beauty of it we will discuss it tomorrow in the class madhukar says thank you thanks a lot arts and gadget stuff says i unable to send why are you unable to send please send it to chessbase india at gmail by pgn saurabh podar how to calculate i i mentioned this saurabh uh, oh yeah all those who are finding it difficult to send games by email remember on chessbase you have an option whenever you create a new database either you save it as pgn here to send it or if you are sending me a cbv file or cbh file then you go and click on a database and do control z which is archive database do it okay and it saves in cbv format okay don't send me in cbh that's not how you mail games so in chess base you can use pgn and the way is to create a new database go to the drop down and select pgn from here okay okay guys a lot of more questions uh, but <clears throat> i'll come to it later i think we have done a good job on the first imbalance which was minor pieces maybe tomorrow we'll have all these games by you and an introduction to the second imbalance which is pawn structure very important imbalance as well uh, and yeah so thanks all and by the way today is an online event on play chess um, so if you go here to chessbase.in and you go to the section which is where is it yeah here this one march masters online blitz it's happening today at 8 pm and lot of top players are playing with Donchenko, Setu Raman, Arvind, Alan Pichot, SL Narayanan, Mikhail Kobalia. It's a huge number of GMs. I think over 20 GMs are playing and 25 IMs. Uh, there is a total price fund of 50,000 rupees with the first, uh, with I think the entry fee is 300 rupees for chess base account subscribers and 600 for non premium subscribers so already we have 135 players so please join in uh, if you would like to enroll from here uh, this is Sagar Shah signing off for today thank you all for your attention it was really nice see you tomorrow at 9